I'm going to put this. Um, Eric Fromm, long time ago, was actually quite a visionary. He wrote in the 50s. But what he was very capable of saying is that we think that love is easy and that finding the right person is what is difficult. Um, that it's the love object that is complicated, but the, the experience itself of loving. Um, and of course, he turned it on its head. Um, that love is a verb, that it's not a permanent state of enthusiasm, and that it's an actual practice, and, and that that practice gets repeated all the time. I would say play is when risk is fun, but you can't play when you are in a situation of danger, anxiety, or contraction. So you have to feel safe in order to play, but if you do not play, you won't experience the erotic. I like the concept of ambiguous loss because I think that it's actually a good description of the kind of new form of loneliness that I think we are often describing. To, to explain, ambiguous loss is, for example, when a person is still physically present but psychologically gone, as if when they have Alzheimer, for example. Or if you have someone who disappeared, they are physically gone but psychologically present. In both cases, you cannot resolve the question of mourning and loss because you don't know, are they here or are they not here? When people describe to me being put on pause in a conversation or lying next to someone in bed who is scrolling through their Instagram feeds and is physically present but psychologically gone um, or is having literally a, a, another life with their phones, what they're describing is not the physical isolation of loneliness. They're describing a loss of trust and social capital that they are experiencing next to the very person with whom they should not be feeling alone. That's ambiguous loss. I mean, the idea is that passion is like the moon, right? It has intermittent eclipses. <laughs> this notion that it just people will live in a permanent state of passion, no, of course not. I mean, nobody would go to work for that matter. Desire is to own the wanting. That's one way of looking at it. And in order to own something, there needs to be a sovereign self that is free to choose. And, of course, feels worthy of wanting and feels worthy of receiving. That's why desire is so intimately connected with the sense of self-worth. Many of us these days are at least going to have two or three marriages or committed relationships in our lifetime. And some of us will do it with the same person. And those people who do it with the same person, that is erotic intelligence. Because they're able to reinvent themselves on location and to create a new relational arrangement with each other. And if you cannot do it with each other, you'll go do it somewhere else. But you need to do it because if not, you die. You know, you need to change to continue to stay alive and it involves novelty but novelty is not about new positions you know that's what people then end up thinking if you're talking about sexual but no novelty is new experiences of yourself in the world and of your partner in relationship to you if you're talking about a partner but if not it's new experiences of yourself in the world and that involves taking risks having an active engagement with the unknown as Rachel Botsman calls it it's you know and when people do it there's a sense of purpose, there's a sense of aliveness, there's a sense of joy, there's a sense of transmission. There's no age. There is no age, you know, in, in the chronological sense, because you are in touch with life. You know, what is intuition? It is a non-judgmental way to actually assess another person that is not rational. Uh, but that is driven by the meaning that that person has for us. And that form of knowledge is not as popular these days, or certainly not in the West. And I think that it is a fundamental piece of knowledge that people need to have in relationships. Because when you don't have that, then you're left just dealing with borders and consent and rules and things like that, rather than, you know, the ability to play 